The conflict between the religious freedom America was founded upon and the modern-day homosexual and transgender movement seems to be reaching critical mass. A biblical stance on these sexual issues is now branded as being hate, which means the protection of religious viewpoints is quickly evaporating. Could churches be silenced as the acceptance of same-sex relationships and an alphabet soup of genders becomes politically correct orthodoxy? Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk about it in Washington, D.C. with Christiana Holcomb of the Alliance Defending Freedom. My reading of the First Amendment is that there are five parts to it. There's the religion clause, there's the speech clause, there's the freedom of press, freedom of assembly, and the right to petition the government for redress of grievances. One of those five elements seems to be under incredible duress in our day, and that's the free exercise of religion. What, what's happened in America to where churches no longer have the freedoms to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, special interest groups are pushing laws that we call sexual orientation, gender identity ordinances. And what they're trying to do is insert into these non-discrimination laws protections for certain types of conduct. And that is conduct which the majority of all faiths across America today believe to be sinful and inconsistent with their religious beliefs. For example, they're trying to insert protections for sexual orientation, um, who you love, men, women, both sexes or neither sex, gender identity, how you identify and perceive your gender regardless of your actual biological sex. And so what we're seeing is these non-discrimination laws that protect these types of conduct are on a collision course with the First Amendment, with the free exercise of religion of people of faith, of entities of faith, and even churches, and how they exercise their religious convictions. What, uh, what's changed, though? There have always been people who stand opposed to Christian teaching, Christian ideals, Christian doctrines. Um, the argument has always historically been that, well, it's just wrong, the, the Bible, the text is wrong. You know, so there have, been, there have been opponents to Christian teaching before, but Christians themselves have always had freedom to speak in response to those opponents. We seem to be losing that freedom today. What has changed is proponents of these ordinances now have the force of law behind them. And they're using it to not only silence all dissent, but really to crush those who oppose what they stand for. And that includes the church. The Supreme Court created out of whole cloth a new right, and that's the right of same-sex marriage. That's working its way through at state and local level. and. Um, Many people, businesses, um, Christian couples, individuals are facing incredible mm -hmm. uh, threats against their livelihood. Yes. Creative business professionals are in a really tough place right now with the current status of the law. However, Alliance Defending Freedom has created a resource for creative professionals. And I encourage you to visit adflegal.org to download that resource. It's not a foolproof method, but there are no guarantees with the current status of the law. The courts can still rule as they, as they will. That's exactly right. We can't guarantee, first of all, to avoid litigation, first of all, and secondly, we can't guarantee that you will ultimately win. But what we can say is given the current state of the law and our expertise in this area, we believe that following these steps will place you in a better legal position. Wise as serpents, gentle as doves, yes. right? You're taking common sense protections mm -hmm. in, given the environment that we live in. What do you say in response to those who see a divide in the life of Christians that uh, we're to render under Caesar, yes, but we're also to submit to the authority of the governing bodies God has placed over us because they were established by God, Romans 13. What do you say to someone who sees himself constrained by the scriptures in that manner? I say that we are the governing body in Romans 13. As a democratic republic, as a self-governing society, we hold the reins of power. We are ultimately responsible. And to fail to exercise our civic duty to vote and to hold our elected leaders accountable is a failure on our part to fulfill our duty under Romans 13. What is one thing 
about the future implications of the Supreme Court's decision on same-sex marriage that if people better understood it, they would better understand the threat embodied in it. The Supreme Court's same-sex marriage decision did not once mention protecting the free exercise of religion. The majority opinion assures us that we may continue to advocate for and teach that marriage is between one man and one woman. But ominously, the court never used the term exercise. And we know that the First Amendment protects our right to exercise our faith, not just to believe. So that, I think, is very concerning.